Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. From 2014 to 2016, NASA performed recovery testing on the Orion spacecraft. A semi-reusable crude capsule designed by Lockheed Martin and a European service module. The propulsion content manufactured by Airbus Defense and Space. For the test, NASA partnered with Navy crew members from the USS Arlington, setting the capsule down in the ocean just off the coast of California. The goal was to attempt multiple recovery scenarios over several years to determine how such a procedure would work in various conditions. Like other capsules of this type, the Orion returns to Earth via a series of parachutes after penetrating the atmosphere. Once splashdown occurs, flotation devices are deployed in order to keep the capsule afloat in any sea conditions. This provides adequate time for Navy crews to reach the capsule and retrieve the astronauts. In this footage, you can see a test version of the vehicle being deployed and retrieved via this ship's well deck. Which is at water level and is typically used for deploying amphibious assault vessels. Earlier tests took place at the Naval Station at Norfolk, Virginia. Again, a mock-up capsule was used in order to protect the real technology from any potential damage. This 18,000-pound boilerplate mock-up was actually built by the Navy, highlighting the extreme level of collaboration between the two organizations. In this exercise, the USS Arlington is utilized once again. This San Antonio class amphibious transport dock has the versatility and equipment to perform many different sea level operations. Its large well deck is the perfect platform for deploying the Orion mock up into the harbor where fast boats can practice corralling the floating capsule using tow lines and hooks. The process requires several small vessels working in tandem to ensure a quick and effective recovery. It's important to remember that spacecraft like the Orion contains millions of dollars worth of sensitive technology. Transporting such equipment is a process that requires a lot of care and patience. That's why NASA has chosen to employ one of the strangest looking cargo aircraft in the world, the Aerospace Line's Super Guppy. This large, wide-bodied aircraft is specifically designed to carry oversized cargo. In the past, it's helped transport stages of the Saturn V rocket and the command module for the Columbia.
One of the most interesting things about the Super Guppy is the manner in which its cargo bay opens. In this case, the front of the aircraft, which is bulbous by design, pulls forward to reveal a massive cargo area. It spans 111 feet by 25 feet by 25 feet. While the plane is not designed for speed, it can provide a safe, easy ride for nearly 60,000 pounds of equipment. Thanks to some help from the 179th Airlift Wing of the Ohio National Guard, the Orion can safely journey from Mansfield, Ohio to launch areas in Houston or Cape Canaveral. While not a military organization, NASA has long formed partnerships with the U.S. Air Force, the Navy, and even the Army. For example, here you can see a recovery helicopter operating out of a facility known as White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. This special testing area is operated by the U.S. Army and is often utilized by NASA to test rockets and other equipment. The site is quite remote and has a long history of being used for various secret tests. In fact, it was the site of testing the very first atomic bomb and early landing tests of the Space Shuttle Columbia. The helicopter here is being loaded with materials to aid in the recovery of a recently fired scientific rocket. Another major NASA collaboration was the development and testing of the Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk Surveillance Drone. At the time, it was one of the most advanced high-altitude aircraft ever developed. This particular RQ-4 just received a massive overhaul and fresh paint job in order to reduce corrosion. The Global Hawk is easily recognizable thanks to its massive 130-foot wingspan. which dwarfs its 47-foot fuselage. The aircraft can reach altitudes of up to 60,000 feet and travel at speeds of nearly 400 miles per hour. Back in 2007, NASA took control of two RQ-4s in order to support its high-altitude, long-duration Earth science missions. So while the military plans to retire these drones in 2027, there's little doubt they will go on to have long, successful careers performing other duties. Though NASA and the military do not share personnel, they often utilize one another for training purposes. For example, here you can see the Hawaii Air National Guard 204th Airlift Squadron prepping for what's known as Contingency Astronaut Rescue. In this case, both NASA and the U.S.'s first private space corporation, SpaceX, is involved in the training process. It includes loading a C-17 with rafts, jet skis, 
and rescue gear so that astronauts and equipment can be quickly and effectively retrieved in case of an emergency on water or land. The C-17's massive cargo bay is perfect for this task. As slats on the floor allow for the installation of rollers so equipment can be very quickly deployed or even airdropped at a specified location. In a rescue situation, time is of the essence. By working together, NASA, SpaceX, and the Air National Guard can maximize their response time. From the very beginning of NASA, the majority of astronauts were Air Force or Navy pilots. As such, both organizations utilize one another's training facilities in order to save time and money. Both astronauts and pilots need to be concerned about G-forces, for example. In this case, a centrifuge is a perfect opportunity for these men and women to increase their tolerance to gravitational pressures. Centrifuges are expensive and difficult to build, so it makes little sense to include them at every facility. One of the most advanced centrifuges in the world can be found at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. It was first introduced in 2018 and trains roughly 1,200 pilots and astronauts annually. As capsules like the Orion splash down into the ocean on landing, it's necessary for NASA astronauts to undergo water survival training. This takes place at Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington. And incorporates a wave machine, smoke and wind machines, and loud, distracting noises to better simulate a real life or death situation. Among the procedures practiced are emergency egress, hoist operations, raft survival, and how to use signaling and recovery devices. And while it may seem a bit like a game, both the astronauts and the personnel know that the things they learn here may save their lives in the future. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.